ask, my next guest is the host of the conspiracy show, The Panic Hour, and local Philadelphia comedian, Mr. Steve Miller Miller. Hi team, how you doing? Good. Hi, I'm Steve Miller Miller. Uh, I made two lists and I'm gonna let you pick. I have a list of clean jokes and I have a list of dirty jokes. Um, the clean jokes are about SEPTA and geometry, mainly. Uh, and the dirty jokes are about my lifelong habit of putting strange Asian men's dicks into my mouth. So, do you wanna hear the clean jokes or do you wanna hear the dirty jokes? <laughs> Chanting Asian dicks. <laughs> All right, so it shall be. Hold on, let me refuel. So basically what you need to know is that I am to sucking dick what the Amish are to making furniture. Uh, like the Amish, it's a skill I do with craft and precision, often spending hours on just one masterwork. Uh, like the Amish, it's a skill I learned from my grandfather. Uh, at, and just like the Amish, we both sell our respective products at Lancaster area truck stops. Um, someone walked up to me, they said, Steve Miller Miller, I heard your asshole is like the community college of Philadelphia. I heard anyone can get in and the only people that are there are there because they have no other options. I said, that's not true. My asshole's like Harvard. It's difficult to get into, but a hell of a lot easier when you're Asian. Thank you, back of the room. It's nice. Good little vibe back there. I don't know about you folks, but I get sick of people constantly asking me who my favorite president was. God, it never ends. Steve Miller Miller, who was your favorite president? Steve Miller Miller, who was your favorite president? I'll tell you who my favorite president was. Gerald Ford, and I'll tell you why. In 1975, Gerald Ford signed a law that let three million Vietnamese immigrants into the country and they didn't believe in birth control, and they had a whole bunch of sons, and I spent the next 30 years fucking all the sons. And people were like, but man, how could that make Gerald Ford your favorite president? Abraham Lincoln saved the union. You know what I need? Vietnamese dick. You know what I don't need? Arkansas to be part of my country. <laughs> Thank you. Take that into advisement. This really, really drunk Korean guy walked up to me after a show. He said, Steve Miller Miller, I want you to sign my dick. I said, can I do it in 10 minutes? He said, why do you want to wait 10 minutes? I said, because I hate the taste of Sharpie. Because I was going to put his dick in my mouth, see? <laughs> see how that goes. You want to hear a joke about SEPTA? Yeah. All right, I was riding SEPTA and I saw this, I, this guy had this shirt and it was one of these in loving memorial shirts and it said in loving memory of Lil Rel, sunrise 9995, sunset 102311. I saw this shirt on October 24th, which means that in the 24 hours after Lil Rel died, <laughs> shirts were already being airbrushed. How did that conversation go down at the ICU waiting room? Doctor, how's Lil Rel? Little Rel's in critical condition. We're not sure he's gonna make it through the night. Well, fuck it, we better not risk it. To the gallery! <laughs> I saw a dude uh, reading a book on SEPTA, which was a miracle. And the, the book he was reading was Push by Sapphire, which is the novel that Precious is based on. And I thought, wouldn't it be faster to just look up Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna tell you some geometry jokes and then leave. Uh, two parallel lines walk into a bar. They never meet. <laughs> geometry jokes, are you clidding me? Okay. Uh, so a segment and array go out on a date. They go to this really fancy restaurant, right? No, a, seg a segment and an angle. A segment and an angle go out on a date. Go to this really fancy restaurant. The angle all leans back in his chair and he puts his feet up and she's like, you are being really, really obtuse right now. So he leans forward and she says, there, that's a cute position for you. 
And like the dates, the, the dates going well. They go back to her apartment and they're making out all hardcore, right? And then he pops this 90 degree exterior angle and she says, that's not right. And he looks down and he goes, 90 degrees, baby. I think that is right. And so he goes and he tries to pull the underwear off of the segment. But the thing is, he can't find the other end of the segment. It just keeps going and going and going. And then she looks down and she says, oh, I should probably tell you, my name's Ray. All that joke for such little payoff. <laughs> so it goes. You guys were a lot of fun. I'm Steve Miller Miller. Thank you. This one? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Steve Miller Miller. Good thank day. you. Hello. Thank you, Am I on? I'm on. I'm on. Now, Steve, uh, you're a gay fella, huh? All day. <laughs> Steve, I gotta ask you, uh, what, what's the situation with the Asians? Why do you like the Asians so much, anyway? Once you go Asian, you never go Caucasian. Well, that rhymes, and therefore it seems correct. It's true. If something <laughs> rhymes, it's true. I, that's, it's that's, something I'm telling you. Ah, so... I just made it, that true. My mind is collapsing upon itself because of <laughs> what just happened. I don't... I just throw this card away and run out the back door now. Um... Steve. Nostradamus actually actually had a triptych about about that. But anyway, go ahead. No, I was kind of hanging on. <laughs> um, Steve, so in this day and age, uh, you know, um, doing your gay material in comedy, do you still feel that there's there's an inherent shock value in oh, speaking yeah. graphically about gay sex? Listen to me. <laughs> I. I've come to the point in my life where I've eaten out so many Asian dudes, dirty assholes, that I can tell which kind of nuts he was eating that day. Are you talking about that sort of thing? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. That yeah, is yeah. the sort of yeah. thing I was talking about. Yeah, I think there's a shock value to that. Correct, yeah. Well, that, and, and it works quite well. Okay. Um, so, so, by the way, in case you were wondering, pistachios. <laughs> so, Steve, I understand that you were brought up religious, though. You're, you had a very religious upbringing. Does that surprise you, really? <laughs> what religion were you brought up? Lutheran, for the win. Anybody here? Any Lutherans? One? This is most certainly true. Hell yeah. In the back. Uh, I'm not that familiar with Lutherans, but I suspect that they're rather religious, as all we, religious There people. are people that enjoy their potlucks, let me tell you. Yeah. And, and when did you decide, as a person, that you're not religious anymore? <sighs> I don't know. I lost my virginity in a, in, a, in a Chili's parking lot. And I think it was probably like around the same time. That's fair enough. Oh, but related note, I, la I later tried to buy that piece of land because the Chili's closed and was demolished and it was just a vacant piece of land. And in the real estate crash in 2008, land in Ohio was going for crazy, crazy cheap. And I put in a bid for $3,000 to buy the land I lost my virginity on. I was going to like build a sodomy refuge. And... And, and, and the zoning board didn't like that idea. I, I, I didn't get to buy the land. Shocking. Um, Steve, um, so, so are your parents aware of what you're doing with the comedy? And your life? So my... <laughs> my, my okay, my, mom's, my mom is... My mom came to see one of my shows. I was performing in Cleveland. Uh, and she went in, and I knew she was going to be there. Like, I knew she was going to, like, try to sneak in after I had specifically told her, like, don't come to my show. And she was there. And the first joke I said was, I went to the doctor. He told me I had anal warts. I said, you call it anal warts. I call it rib for his pleasure. And uh, that was the end of Diane at the comedy show. <laughs> Uh, Steve, I've, give, I've been given a, um, a very sensitive piece of information that I've been allowed uh, by your handlers to break here. That's right. On the Tuesday show. On the Tuesday show. And it seems that for the first time, um, it can be announced that you actually have a child. I have a kid. Steve that's Miller being, Miller. That's being raised by lesbians in Tennessee. Not a lot of people know this. Can you explain this to us? Yeah. In, two, in 2008, everyone was all optimistic. Barack Obama fucking change and shit. 
And these lesbians were like, damn, like, I need a kid that's, like, tall, funny, and gay. And, like, on a good day, I'm two of three. So they, they, they took a bunch of my baby batter, and they made a kid with it. And they, like, I just learned the, the, that I had a kid recently. However, I have a cousin, because I'm from Ohio, uh, who I'd not seen for 10 years. And I found her recently, and she's 31. She's 11 months older than I am. And uh, she had told me that she had found a lot of joy in her life recently because she had just become a grandmother. 31 years old. She's a grandma. So maybe I'll get there in 10 years because, I mean, it's my kid. Like, come on. Like, and it's a girl. Like, she's going to be knocked up by eighth grade. Like, realistic. Well, congratulations on uh, feeling that way. And, 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 um, and she's in Tennessee. What the hell else is there to do? I'm going to be disappointed if my kid doesn't do crystal meth. Like, Seriously. Truth be told. It's almost as bad as Indiana. Um, yeah. Steve. Uh, like, it's on the welcome side of Tennessee. Welcome to Tennessee. It's almost as bad as Indiana. I understand that you are a student in mortuary school. Correct. And I'm just going to ask you uh, why. It's the wave of the future. Those baby boomers, they're going to be dying. They're going to be dying in force. And someone's going to have to haul away the bodies. And that's where Steve Miller Miller comes in. So, um, I, I'm sorry. That's about all the time that we have. Uh, I really would like to thank my last guest, Mr. Steve Miller Miller, for coming out here and uh, showing you all his comedy. I'd like to thank all of our guests. I'd like to thank Ara Fisher, Ryan Belsky, Peter Mo Davis, Brian Ashby, Emily Doofnagel, I'd like to thank Mr. Ron Gallo for being the co-host of tonight's event. And uh, folks, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then we're going to have the uh, rock and roll band Circadian Rhythms, one of my favorite rock and roll bands in this whole city. And I say that unequivocally. They're going to come up here and play for you guys. So thanks so much for hanging out, and uh, that's about it for this. Say it's a victory is mine. Oh, yeah. I trouble like the dice do. They on the humble like Christ do. Pit stanzas and shite haikus. Since I was a young tycoon, tried to move off like Michael. I understood the universal cycles. Positive, negative, neutral. Impoverished kids on sedatives and never live.